Alright, this is the first video in a series dedicated to mastering Rook and Bishop versus Rook. This is just going over the basics. The Bishop's Triangle is the main reason why the Bishop is superior to the Knight. The Bishop wins more often because it's more complementary to its pieces when preventing the Defender's King from escaping an edge. Not only does the Bishop seal off the immediate escape routes, but it also controls the edge so that there's going to be a potential contact checkmate with the Rook as we'll see. Alright, it's black to move and win. The white king is one square inside the bishop's triangle. The bishop controls f1 and e2. King controls d2. And the white king is threatening to escape to f2. So black has a simple move to win rook to f5 and now rook to f1 is threatened and there's no way to stop checkmate this rook has no safe checks anywhere and the king can't escape the back rank to stop rook to f1 checkmate all right here's another simple position white's king is one square within the bishop's triangle and black has an easy win here rook to g8 all right, this is another simple position that's black to move and win. The white king is one square within the bishop's triangle, except this time the defender has a check, rook to g4, but it's not going to matter because this bishop is going to block and still maintain control of the same diagonal. So black still has an easy win here, rook h7, and there's no way to stop rook to a7 checkmate. This rook has no safe checks over here, and the rook's only safe check simply allows the bishop to block, and the bishop still maintains control of the diagonal, so there's still nothing that white can do to stop checkmate here. So, so far we've only looked at positions where the defender's rook can't do anything. Now let's look at some positions where the defender's rook can actually do something. Let's take note of all the different ways that the defender's rook could possibly defend against a contact checkmate where the defender's king is one square within the bishop's triangle. Alright, so in this position, black is threatening checkmate with rook to b1 mate, and the bishop prevents rook to h3 check. So it looks like white can't do anything here, but white can exploit the fact that it's going to be stalemate. So with all of these squares controlled, the only square left to control would be d1. And after rook to e2 check, it's going to be stalemate if the black king captures. So it's going to be a draw by stalemate there. And if the black king moves instead, White can employ the drawing method known as the second rank defense where the defender prevents the attacker's king from gaining an aggressive post even though black is threatening checkmate here. White can exploit another stalemate so now so there's really no way for black's king to keep an aggressive post on the third rank there's going to be a skewer on the B file so the king would just move back and then white can continue to employ the stalemate defense here so there's no way for black's king to keep an aggressive post the second rank defense aims to keep control of the second rank and then check away the attacker's king when it comes to try to invade on the third rank. So you can see by these evaluations that checks coming from the second rank are a lot more dangerous for the attacker and checks coming from the first rank aren't going to be very dangerous for the attacker. It's a lot more complicated if the bishop is not obstructing the rook's path. So because the bishop is obstructing the rook's path to a more active location, these e1, winning positions are pretty simple. The rook's not going to be able to maintain its checks, so 
if it checks again here, the rook can't occupy its king square and check again, so it would pretty much just be over for white here. So instead of checking again, white's only other option would be to move the rook somewhere else, and then the king... And now if the king moves, then there's going to be a skewer here. So if white tries to avoid the skewer by moving to where it looks like it's going to be safe, it's really not safe because the rook can check and then bishop d3 skewer or bishop d3 immediately covering the e2 square and threatening checkmate. And also attacking the rook. The king is so, just going to move again to reinforce the bishop's diagonal, and there's nothing that white can do to escape that. All right, this is black to move and win. This is a special case where black can't win with the ordinary king maneuver on the third rank. In this case, White can get a second rank defense with rook to a2. It's going to be stalemate if king takes. But normally in this position, black would be able to win the rook by pinning it with the bishop. But in this particular formation, the bishop doesn't have enough room to maneuver to pin the rook to its king. So this position would be a draw by the second rank defense. So instead of king to b3, black's gonna have to retreat the king to the fourth rank, but black can still win by exploiting white's bad placement near the edge. So white's choices here are either king to b2, king to b1, or rook to a2. If rook check, this is losing very quickly with just king to c3. So the moves to hold on longer would be rook to a2 trying for a second rank defense or moving the king. So if rook to a2 aiming for a second rank defense, so now king c3 is refuted with rook c2 check. Oops, the rook can take the bishop, never mind. Black is able to stop the second rank defense with rook to d1 check. And now this rook's path is obstructed by its own king, and all these squares are restricted by black's pieces, so there's no where for white to go here. So black simply wastes a move, and this forces white's rook to move. If rook here, then black checks and king takes rook. So rook to a1 is white's only move. And now, after rook check with tempo again, king to b1 would be losing quickly after king to b3, and then either mate or a skewer here. So white's best move would be king to c1, and the king can return to support its rook if black tries to skewer here. So black has a couple different ways to win here. There's king to c3, threatening checkmate if rook takes the bishop, so, and the bishop can block if rook checks, also covering the a2 square, so king to b1, the bishop comes to b3 anyway and covers the a2 square, and also black can check here, there's going to be discovered attack winning the rook, so king b1, and now black sacrifices the bishop so white's only choice is a rook move and the rook's taken for free here so the rook would have to take the bishop and now if king takes rook white plays king takes rook but the king attacks the rook and threatens where the rook can return to block a mate on c1 so black simply threatens checkmate on the first rank and is also attacking the rook so there's nothing that white can do in this position and there's no checks anywhere else and 
this will be kind of what's going to happen in the other variations. Instead of going for a second rank defense with rook to a2, white can try a king move. If king to b2, rook check, this is basically going to be the same thing if king to c1, rook check, king to b1, then king to b3. So king to b1, black simply advances the king to where it's protecting its bishop and still the rook simply retreats and is threatening a skewer and the king protects where the king can support its rook. So now white's only move would be a rook check and then black is winning very easily here. So white's only other option would be to go for king to b1 and now in this case the rook is still far away from here so black doesn't have to worry about the king attacking the rook so black can go ahead and play for this sacrifice king to c3 and now if rook takes the bishop then king to b3 threatens mate while also attacking the rook and attacking where it can defend mate. So instead of rook takes bishop, white would have to do something else. This would obstruct its king and lead to mate, and then this would also lead to mate because the bishop's controlling a2. So white's only move would be king to a2, and now the bishop simply checks and is mating on the next move, either king here and rook a8 mate or king to b1 and then rook to d1 mate. Alright, so we've seen that checks coming from the first rank are worse than checks coming from the second rank. Now let's look at another way to possibly defend the contact checkmate. The rook can right, try directly defending from the first rank. White's king is one square within the bishop's triangle and it's threatening to escape to b2. So black threatens checkmate and covers b2 threatening rook to b1 checkmate and both of these rook checks can be answered with a bishop block that maintains control of the diagonal as well so the only other try for white would be to defend the first rank directly but since the rook only has one square that defends it black can win with zugzwang so white's other waste moves can be king to d1 so the way that black wins is by taking care of this d1 square with the idea king to e2 controlling d1 what black has to worry about stalemate tactics so if white's rook could check on e2 in a position like this then that would be a draw so black's bishop needs to worry about the e2 square so the idea would be to control e2 so that any stalemate attempts on the second rank can be refuted by a bishop capture instead of a king capture so White's only move is the king move, and then this wouldn't do anything because the skewer is avoided, so black simply wastes a move, and this time the rook has an extra square, but it's just obstructing the king, so rook to h8 would win easily here. The king simply moves back, and now with the bishop controlling the e2 square, black doesn't have to worry about the stalemate and black can go ahead and cover d1 so after rook to a2 check king to e1 keeping control of these critical mating squares the stalemate idea doesn't work because black can capture with the bishop instead of the king so now white has nothing but to return and try to keep controlling b1 but black simply wastes the move again and now white has no moves here. 
All right, so we've already examined most of the ways that the defender can try to defend a contact checkmate. Now let's look at the most complicated ways, which are the Zen defense and the third rank defense, which are very closely related defenses. So the fifth Zen is the only Zen that's not a draw, and we'll look at that in part two, but for now, we'll just see that the first through fourth Zens are draws because the defender has enough room once he escapes the bishop's triangle and the third rank defense is like a prelude to the zen defense all right this is black to move and win black's rook and bishop are set up for a potential checkmate if this king isn't obstructing the bishop's path but still controlling the b3 square if king to b4 the bishop controls b8 and the bishop controls f4 so the rook doesn't have any checks here and black's threatening checkmate so this looks pretty bad for white but the fact that the king is currently controlling a3 this allows the stalemate sacrifice rook to f1 this completely obstructs the rook's path to this a1 square so black no longer has checkmate and it's going to be stalemate if black captures the white rook so black has no choice but to move the rook off the first rank the most active move would be a rook check and remember the first rank usually isn't a good location for white's rook but the fact that black's pieces are discoordinated is going to allow white to escape this position so a plan would be to go for rook mate here planning to block on c3 like we saw earlier but so So if king to b4, then white is going to draw with rook to f1, but black can play king to c4 instead. Now this a3 square is free for white's king, so white doesn't have any stalemate sacrifices here. The bishop controls f4, but the bishop doesn't control c8. Now this isn't the same as before because now with the rook on the c-file instead, the rook is going to be blocking its own king.